The Consequences of Sexual Misconduct Transgressor of the third precept are individuals who were constantly absorbed in sense pleasure. And whether they're a man or a woman, they usually had numerous sexual partners. Even when married with a family, these men relished the nightlife, regularly frequenting nightclubs, bars, and brothels. As for the married woman, they regularly slept with other men. Such misconduct causes quarrels and discord within the family, leading to distrust between the married couple. In addition, the health of the body and mind deteriorates, opening the gateway to diseases such as venereal diseases, AIDS, etc. Sometimes it can even result in murder. The wife may hire someone to kill her adulterous husband or vice versa. This can easily evolve into a societal problem. The family experiences distress, the children don't receive the same attention and affection, and ends up imitating their adulterous parents' lifestyle and resorting to violence. The children start frequenting the nightlife and experimenting with drugs and alcohol. They may even experiment with sex prematurely. And if they became pregnant, they turn to abortion as the solution, thus gaining a chain of endless problems along the way. On their deathbed, People who regularly transgress the third precept will see a replay of their past misdeeds, causing their mind to become pitch black. This leads to a rebirth in the third site of the Great Hell, where they will be subjected to various forms of punishments by male and female hell denizens in accordance to their misdeeds. For example, a married man or woman who had affairs will be reborn as a hell being that gets thrown into a pit filled with caustic semen. The acid will dissolve the hell being's body, and it dies an excruciating death. Once reborn, it will have its genitals chopped, sliced, and cut over and over again by hell denizens with a sharp knife. Its past misdeeds will cause it to develop female sex organ. Hell denizens with a huge male sex organ made of hot iron, or a burning club with sharp barbs or a starfruit-like object with sharp blade-like ridges will penetrate the hell being and spray acidic semen, dissolving the hell being's body from inside out. Rebirth occurs instantaneously and it will be pounded to death by a club that looks like a male genitalia. When it is reborn again, it will be beaten up by the hell denizens that use a sharp sword to sever and carve hell being's genital into that of a female until it dies. These are but a few examples. After the great hell, it will be reborn in Usatak hell to undergo further tortures in the sea of acidic semen. Its body will be infested with worms that look like sperms. It will be chased and bitten by fish that looks like a male genitalia. On land, it will be chased and bitten by dogs with a head that resembles male or female genitals. These are just a few examples. Some hell beings will possess sexual organ that is large and heavy as iron, forcing the hell being to move backward while dragging its heavy sexual organ with it. Then hell denizens will transform themselves into dogs with metal canines chasing and biting the hell being's sexual organ. The pain is gruesome. For the adulterous couple, the male will have a long sexual organ that the hell denizens will use to impale the female partner with. Then hell denizens will transform into hell dogs with iron canines chasing and biting the two hell beings. In some cases, the hell denizens will tie the genitals of hell beings to one end with a rope and the other to a hell dog. Then the hell dog will run quickly while dragging the hell being with it. The pain is horrendous. After Utsatat hell, the hell being will run towards Yomaloka hell, where it will then be dragged by hell wardens inside the courthouse to the front of the judge's desk. Images of the past misdeeds performed as a human being will be displayed because the bad karma is not exhausted. The judge orders it to undergo more punishment in Yomaloka. 
it will be forced to climb a red cotton tree with sharp hot iron thorns. There are both male and female hell beings. The pain and suffering will last a long, long time. Once the bad karma is reduced, rebirth will take place in the Beta realm. As Betas, they will have to drink pus pouring out from the genitals of other Betas. Some become female Betas with a long male organ extending out of their mouth. Some are male Betas whose sexual organ is constantly ablaze. If someone enjoys having intercourse with animals as a human being, they will be reborn as an Asura Gaia that looks like the animals he had sex with. Some Asura Gaia have the head of a dog, the beak and wing of a duck, legs of a chicken, and its genitals constantly infested with worms. After the Beta or Asura Gaia period, rebirth will occur in the animal realm beginning as primitive life forms such as a worm in waste sewage because it liked dirty, filthy things. Later, it will be reborn as a dog due to their previous promiscuity. It will be reborn as a monkey because it liked to deceive others. It will be reborn as a donkey because he or she embarrassed his or her spouse by their misconduct. It will be reborn as an ox or a buffalo because he had affairs with other men's wives. After the animal realm, rebirth will take place as various forms in the human realm. It will be reborn as a transvestite, a man who longs to be a woman. This is a person with the severest consequence from a previous sexual misconduct committed throughout many existences both as a man and as a woman. The consequences from the misdeeds are fruiting simultaneously. Since the number of lifetimes that the sexual misconduct was committed more as a female than that as a man, he now has a strong predisposition to be a woman. If he lives in a time when technology is not as advanced, he would just opt to dress like a woman. However, if he lives in a time when technology is cutting edge, he will undergo a sex reassignment surgery. A gay person is a man who is attracted to other men. They have transgressed the third precept throughout many existences, but the overall comma has abated and only the residual is sending forth its effects. Let's examine when the promiscuity was committed. If promiscuity was prevalent in lifetimes born as a female than those as a male, he will have the characteristic of a gay queen. If the promiscuity occurred equally or slightly more in lifetimes as a male, he will have characteristic of a gay king. If the promiscuity was greater in lifetimes as a male, she will have the attributes of a butch lesbian. If the consequence from lifetimes of promiscuity as a female is equivalent or slightly more, she will have attributes of a femme lesbian. Prostitutes are those who committed sexual misconduct during previous lifetimes as a man, and the negative comma is still intense. When the negative comma diminishes, she will be reborn a normal woman with a family, but will have an unfaithful husband. A reflection of herself when she was a promiscuous man. The bad comma from sexual misconduct combined with the comma from killing will cause a woman to develop uterine or breast cancer. Later on, they will eventually be reborn as a woman with a faithful husband. This is the consequences of the comma from sexual misconduct that has become lighter and lighter. Rebirth as a single woman occurs when the bad comma has become even lighter. Rebirth as a woman who is determined to practice chastity occurs when the bad comma is nearly exhausted. But in the meantime, if she transgresses the third precept again, she will return to the vicious cycle of the endless suffering for a long, long time. 
Therefore, we should hasten to accumulate only good deeds, practice chastity, and distance ourselves from the environment of sexual misconduct. We should regularly offer alms, keep the precepts, and practice meditation so that we experience true happiness, be reborn in the states of happiness, and eventually attain Nibbana. Thank you.